Hi everybody, this is Technoli. And today we've got a really exciting build for all of you Logic Pro X users. We've got an i9 9900K with 32 gigabyte of RAM. We've got our MDME hard drive here. We're running with the Gigabyte Z390 Design Air and we're going to hook up the Apollo Thunderbolt 3 Universal Audio Audio Interface. And we're just using an inexpensive ATX case here. And uh, we've got a Thermaltake power supply, 500 watt. Notice there's no graphics card. We're going to use the onboard Intel graphics on the motherboard on the processor. So a simple build, but for all of you guys that are kind of on a budget, but want a high end Logic Pro X system, I think this is a great choice. We're also going to put in our Fenby Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. So this build will have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. We've got the audio interface with Thunderbolt working. So uh, I think this is great. This is the system that all you Logic Pro guys have been waiting for. All right, guys, uh, let's get started with this motherboard. Let's get our CPU mounted and our memory put in. Now, if you're not familiar with the Gigabyte Z390 Design Air, this is a nice board. It has a built-in Thunderbolt, okay? So here's the board. And it uh, comes with everything you need. comes with some SATA cables, has more standoffs and things for your NVMe drives if you want to add more. And uh, nice. So let me show you the ports on this board. I'll give you an idea of what you get with this thing. Okay. All right, so you got four memory slots. You've got tons of uh, SATA connections right here. Um, USB 3 header for the front of the case. Of course, our processor goes here. We've got... Um, Three full-size PCIe's, two smalls, and this is a USB 2 header port. This is your audio port for the front of the case. You've got some more system fan and water pump plugs if you want here. you got CPU fans here. So this board really has it all. Right here is the Intel Wi-Fi Bluetooth card that comes with the uh, system, but this will not work. So we're going to take that out. This will not work with our Hackintosh. All right, on as far as ports go, look at this. We've got two USB 2s here, a display port, HDMI, which we're going to use. We've got two Thunderbolt ports. These are USB 3.1s, and then we've got four USB 3s right there. And there's two LAN connectors on this. And they're both supported, so we're good. And of course, our audio. These are Wi-Fi, but we're not going to be using these. All right, so there we go. Now, let's get out this beautiful processor. Oh, man. When you spend that kind of money on a processor, it better come in a beautiful case, right? So here it is this eggshell for our i9-9900. Our I9 All of that for this little guy right here. Okay guys, let's take it out. All right, then just lift this arm up or down and over and that will lift that up. Don't touch anything in there. Those are pins and if we bend those or drop something in there, we're done. So let's open up the processor. Okay. And you're going to notice there's two notches. 
There's a notch over here and a notch over here. And those line up with this socket right here. We're just going to lay it in there. Not put any pressure on it. And then we're just going to make sure that it's in the socket, which it is. We'll put this underneath this little screw here, this lip. This will pop off and put our bracket and it's installed. So we're good. Okay, now we gotta put on some heat sink compound and uh, put on the fan. Okay, so I've got some Noctua thermal paste right here. So I'm gonna put some of that on here. And a little bit of this goes a long way. So I just put like a dot in each area right there and that'll be plenty okay then this is just a cheap inexpensive CPU fan you may want to get a, a better one but it's the one I had right now Noctua D12 is really nice so let's go ahead and put this bracket on the back only goes on one way as you can see this hole lines up with that right there Okay, and then we can go ahead and set the CPU fan cooler right there. And then with the screwdriver, I like to just start with one screw a little bit and then go across or cut a corner to the next screw. Okay. And then start with one of these. And then directly across. That way you got even tension on your CPU fan and cooler. Okay, there we go. There we go. Finish tightening. And here. All right, let's go ahead and plug in our CPU fan. It goes right back here on this CPU header, this light gray one. Okay, now while I'm right here, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this Wi-Fi card that's not supported out of here because we don't want any interference with our Hackintosh. So I'm just gonna disconnect these little antenna cables and pull it out of its socket. There, and I'll put the screw back in there just in case I ever want to use it for a different build. Or I've tried putting in a Wi-Fi Bluetooth card here that's supposed to be supported with macOS, but it didn't work. So I ended up using one of these Fenby 1200 amp cards, and I'll show you that when we do the build. And it works perfectly. And it's plug and play. Okay, let's go ahead and put in some RAM. And what we want to do is we want to select this second DIM and fourth DIM. Okay, those are your ones you want to start with. And if you're going to fill it all the way up, make sure you line this notch up with the notch right there in the board. Then it doesn't matter because you're going to be filling up all the holes. But we're doing 32 gigabytes for this system, which is going to give us a lot of uh, power. Okay, let's get a NVMe drive put in here. Okay, so let's take out this little screw. And uh, now if your board doesn't have anything right here, then in the box you've got one of these standoffs right here. And you just line up where you need to have it. So I need to have it right here. So we just put this in here. And we don't need to go crazy with these guys. Just just using your thumb to tighten it up is plenty of strength on it. Okay. And then put that in there. Just slide it in there real easy. And then put our uh, screw back on it to hold it down. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not using this one, 
is just because I can use this as a secondary. And believe it or not, guys, these things that they call heat sinks, they really don't do much. So I'm not worried about having a heat sink on top of this. I'd rather have the air get to it. That's my opinion. You guys may have a different opinion, but that's my opinion. Okay, so here it is. We've got our hard drive put in. We've got our RAM, CPU, everything. So we're ready to put it in the case. Okay, let's get started with that case. Okay, guys, so here's our case. This is a, uh, it's called an Aero Cool. So let's go ahead and open it up here, the side cover. It's got this plastic side cover. It's not real glass, but it's okay. And I think this case was like $40 or something. Really inexpensive, very lightweight. Okay, so there it is. It's got a nice big fan up here. And we've got all of our cables here for our, our front header up here and switches. And uh, let's see, let's open up this other side. Okay, there we go. Okay, so to get the board put in, first thing we need to do is put some standoffs in here. So this board is going to require, let's see here. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so we can see right here, we're going to need to have standoffs here, 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 and here. So I've got my little standoffs right here, and I got this little 3 16 socket so I can put these standoffs in. Let's just see, we'll just start back here in the corner. Okay, we need one here. Okay, here we go. Put it in here. Now, I already know this fan is going to be in the way to get my motherboard in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew it. Because it is going to be in my way. All right, there we go. Now I can see everything very clearly. Okay, now let's go ahead and put in our motherboard. And yes, it's okay to grab it by the fan. And we wanna line up all of our screws or our, our standoffs. Make sure we see brass under each one of those. Okay, we're good there. And as you can see on the back, we've got our IO shield. Okay, we'll just throw some screws in the motherboard. These are fine thread screws. So see guys, this is really easy. This isn't difficult. Anybody can do this. Okay, so we got our screws in. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna get our headers, our, all of our cables attached, and we wanna try to keep our cables kind of in a nice, in a nice area so we don't have, you know, a messy system. So the first thing we have here, we have these cables that come off the front of the case. Now this says USB card reader, which is up here. Unfortunately, we don't have a header for this because we're going to be using the header down here for USB for our Bluetooth card. So I'm not gonna plug that in. And then this one is HD audio, which I am gonna plug in. And this one also is for a USB 2 port up here, which we're not gonna be able to use, guys. So I'm going to just set these aside and I'll, and I'll wrap a cable around them and we'll find a nice, decent place to put these. So we're not gonna be using them. And then we'll go ahead and plug in our audio header port. It's got a little notch 
a little box here where, that's filled. So you can't put this in wrong. And it goes right up here. And boom, just like that. Okay, so that's done. Now, we also have all of these. These are your switches and your lights on the front of the case. Okay, and this is the header port right here for your hard drive light, your power switch light, or your power switch, your your power LED, and your reset, okay? Okay, so we'll start right here with the hard drive light. And so we'll plug it in with the plus sign toward the back. We'll plug it in right here in the front. And it's kind of loose, so I'm gonna hold it while I put on the power. LED. Then my reset switch or my power switch goes toward the bottom of the case right next to the hard drive. And the reset is right above the power switch. And you don't need to worry about which direction you put these on. So it just switches. Okay, that's done. And then this is my USB 3 header port for the top of the case. And it goes right here. And we're going to plug that in right there. Okay, no graphics card, guys. So we're ready to put in a power supply. So let's go ahead and get our power supply. Here she is. And we'll just go over here on the side of the case. And I'm going to have the fan down. And right here, I can go ahead and put my screws in. Okay. Four screws for the power supply. Okay, now we're going to need our 24 pin and let's see here. I think I'm gonna try putting it right through here. Yeah, that should work nicely. And then right into the board. Don't press too hard. And then we're gonna need our eight pin up here. So let's see what we can do here. Now, in order to get this power cable, because it's not that long, I'm going to have to go up through here, right here on the case, to get it plugged into the motherboard. Not ideal, but let's see what we can do to make it prettier. There we go. All right. So... Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll probably a wire tie this right here. So it's not, you know, just stretched everywhere. Okay, so we're looking pretty decent. All right, so none of these other cables we're going to use. Now this case has a nice little pocket right here. Now you can put in old school hard drives right here. Or you can put additional SSDs in here either way it's got two slots and then right here is some storage for my extra cables so I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff these down in here because I don't need them but this case has a cute little LED light on the front so I'll plug it in it requires one of these SATA cables SATA power cables We'll just stuff these in here. There we go. And then this just plugs in to this. And we've got some cool little lights on the front. All right, now let me see. I can put my cover on the side. Oh yeah, sure, no problem at all. 
So there we go. Put a screw in it to hold it. So there we go. That's our build. That's it, guys. Look. Nice little build. Compact, a lot of air movement. We do need to put our fan back in, though. So let's see here. Arrow goes toward the inside of the case. So we just slide it in there. It's a tight fit, but it works. Now the case comes with, there we go, number four. It comes with a, these slots that you can cover up and then it has a header right here. So you can cover all this mess up. That's it. Let's plug in our case fan to a header right here. I've got a case fan header right next to the CPU one. You know what? I'm going to plug it over here into this one. System fan. There we go. Guys, we almost forgot. We need to put in our Bluetooth card. Now when you get this card, it's going to come like this with a cable and this cute little card. So you just plug in this cable right here in the back of the card. Okay? And then this is a USB header, and that's what we've been saving this one on the motherboard for, is to power our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So we plug it into there, and then we'll just plug it into this slot right here, into this, this little PCIe, right there. See that? It goes right in there. And then here's that little plate that goes across here. And we just put a screw in there, or a couple if you want. I'll just put one for now. And that holds our card into place. So there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and put on the antennas. Just They just screw on, guys. No biggie. There we go. Wi-Fi Bluetooth. Okay, now we can get started. Okay guys, so this computer is just really awesome for anybody wanting a high-powered computer, or whether you're using it for Logic Pro X or audio engineering or not. I mean, this is just a super fast computer. It just has the built-in graphics, so it's perfect for the Logic Pro X or Studio One or Pro Tools or whatever audio software because you're saving that money on the graphics card. You can put that into more memory or another hard drive or whatever. So let's get in here. Let me show you some things. So I'll log in. All right. So here we got, that's connecting to our Thunderbolt right now. Here we got our uh, Bluetooth. We got our Wi Fi up here. Everything's working fine. And if we go over here, you can see that we have right here under Bluetooth, there we go, and uh, under Wi-Fi, there we go. And to find the Thunderbolt, you would think you click it right here, but no, it's under your audio, and there it is, Universal Audio Thunderbolt. So everything's working. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and jump into Logic Pro X because I want you to see what you're able to do with this thing. I'll download later, continue. Now I just installed the uh, Universal Audio and here it's finding all the plugins that come you know, with it or they want you to buy of course, but I'll just abort that for now. All right, and this is our Logic Pro X benchmark program. I did test the audio on this when it gets super high up into what you would think would be clipping, and the audio is as clear as glass. It doesn't matter how many tracks I have enabled. So for all of you that have never seen this before, we have a, a software VSTi right here on all of the tracks, and then we have these uh, 
EQs, multipliers, chorus, a filter, and a plate reverb on plug in on each channel, each one of these channels, and then we got it just a limiter on the bus. Okay, so right now I've got it set up to, I'll show you here, I'm running 32 buffers right there, and here's my cores and threads, and then if I go over here to the project, we're at 24 bit by the way, and i am got this set up to 48k right now. All right, so let's see how many tracks we can get. Let me go ahead and get my load meter set up for you guys so you can see that. Okay, there we go. All right, let's just hit it and see what happens. We got 24 tracks loaded right now, and it's, you know, it loves this. No problem at all. Can run this all day. So let's just bump it on up to 50 tracks. All right, there we go. All right, and let's back it up and hit it again. All right, 50 tracks, about 45%, I would say, on our load meter. Very, very nice. This is 48K at 32 buffers. Let's just, uh, let's just go ahead and go to 100 tracks. See if it'll handle that. There's a hundred tracks right there. All right, let's see what happens. We still have a little room up there. Look at that. Now the, C the uh, CPU fan just started spinning. I can hear it a little bit. So we're putting a little bit of pressure on it. Again, 48 kilohertz and 32 buffers. All right, let's just max it out. See if it'll handle 128 tracks. All right. No system overload. And I'm listening in the headphones and everything is clear. The software synth is clear. So there we go, guys. 48K, 32 buffers, 128 tracks. Very, very impressive. All right. Now. Let's try this. For all you guys that need 96, let's go ahead and crank it up. Let's crank it up to 96 and see if we can get, what, 50 tracks. Okay. Let it finish its thing. Okay. All right, let's go out of here. Sample rate's 96, and we are, let's, let's dump it down to, uh, I don't know, 50 tracks. Because it's, it's double the uh, sample rate, so I figure maybe we should, maybe we can run 50 tracks. Uh, right there is 50 tracks. Let's try it. Okay, we're holding. Let me listen in the headphones. Okay, it's clear. No distortion. I, I think that's about it, guys. I don't think we want to push it any more than that. 50 tracks at 96. Now, I know somebody, one of you, is going to ask me, but what about 192? Well, let's just do it for the heck of it. Let's just do 192. Let's see if we can get 24 tracks. <laughs> 24 tracks at 192. That would be impressive. Okay. Let's see here. Let's just crank it down here. 30, 28. Okay. 24 track studio. 192. Let's see if it'll do it. Ooh, it's holding. Let me listen. Let me listen for any distortion. Ah, just overloaded. All right, let's take off. Let's keep it at 21 tracks. And let me listen. Crystal clear. 21 tracks. 
All right, can we get 22 out of it? It seemed to overload about right here. 192, guys. That's crazy. Okay, 22 tracks. <laughs> 22 tracks at 192. Not bad. Okay. Now, I wanted to tell you guys, on this particular build, and you'll probably, you'll probably forget about this by the time you get yours built, but you can always you know, uh, reference back to the video. This has port USB port mapping already done on it. And um, I'm not going to show you how to build the EFI folder for this because it was extremely involved to get the graphics working. And um, so I'm going to hold off on that because this is just for the guys who just want to get up and running, grab my EFI folder on the uh, my web page and just go with it. Um, it was extremely difficult to get the onboard graphics to work on this board and I'm not sure why but um, had to do a lot of research to uh, get it figured out. So um, on the back of the motherboard there are two USB 2.0 ports right above the PS2 connector. I only turned on one of those and it's the top one. So you plug in your keyboard, mouse, wireless keyboard and mouse into that top. Just put your little dongle, USB dongle, into the top of that port, and you're good. All the rest of the 3.0, 3.1 USBs are good. So there we go. Both Thunderbolts work. Now I only tested Thunderbolt with the audio interface that I have here, this Apollo Arrow and everything's fine so as long as you have this set up you're going to be golden you're going to be able to get in there record and do whatever you need to do so let's get into the bios on this computer and i'm going to show you what you need to set up so we can start installing the mac os catalina okay all right let's go ahead and get in there i'm going to restart and we got to press our delete key to get into the bios Okay, here we are. All right, so on this first screen over here under Favorites, we want to go down here and disable CSM support right here. I want to make sure that's disabled. Secure Boot is set to Custom, which is fine. VT-D is disabled. Make sure that is done correctly. Under Tweaker, there's really nothing in here we need to change except right here we can put our extreme memory profile to profile one our default speed on our memory chips okay all right let's go over to settings under platform power this is the way we want it to look and really there's no changes in here except I've got this right here power on by hitting the keyboard any key and or by moving the mouse okay let's go out of here let's go to IO ports and we want to make sure that we have the IGFX our initial display port is our internal graphics we're gonna make sure our internal graphics are turned on we have to have 64 megabytes pre-allocated for our memory and our aperture size at 256 Wi-Fi we're gonna disable all of these other items are just like you see them, all enabled. Thunderbolt configuration, we need it enabled here and then under discrete, and also, I'm sorry, wake from Thunderbolt device, go ahead and enable it. And then we need it enabled here, disabled there, and this is by default. All right, let's go out of here. USB configuration, make sure you have everything enabled. Network stack is disabled. NVMe, yeah, I have one. SATA, we need to make sure that we have all of our controllers turned on and that we have AHCI as our SATA mode. We're not worried about RAID. There's our controllers, we don't need to touch them. We'll go over here now to boot. And fast boot is disabled. Very important guy right here is to have this set to Windows 
8 slash 10 WHQL. All right, just like that. CSM, we already disabled in our first window. And Secure Boot is disabled right here. Okay, so we are done. So let's press Enter on Save and Exit Setup. And here we go. Okay, now we're going to press the F12 key to make sure that we are booting from our USB stick. Okay, so F12, just keep tapping it until you see it come up. All right, and there it is, my sand disk. I hit enter. And then our menu is going to come up right here. And we're going to select number two on this one, which is install macOS Catalina from the external, which is our external USB. So we'll hit enter. And away we go with all kinds of text. And this is our typical Hackintosh build. And guys, it'll get stuck on a couple of lines, but nothing serious on this one. It moves along. And we're going to get up here to our first screen where we can use our disk utility and erase the hard drive. Get it ready. All right, guys, once we get here, we just click on disk utility and click continue. Do not forget right here, right here, right here, right here to click where it says view, click the down arrow and then click on show all devices. Okay, there is my hard drive right there. So that's my NVMe. I'm going to erase it. And you can call this guys whatever you want. I'm going to call it my Z390 design. There we go. Make sure we change our format to APFS and we definitely want GUID partition map and click erase. And for some reason on this particular motherboard, I've noticed it, it takes probably 15, 20 seconds to do the erase. On other motherboards, it takes five seconds. So who knows why, but we are done. So we click done. Click the little red dot and install Mac OS. Continue. Continue. Agree and agree. And then here's our hard drive we just formatted. And we're going to click install. This is very typical now. The installation on this takes about, uh, about five minutes right here on this screen. It'll get to two minutes remaining and it will reboot on its own. And it's supposed to do that, so don't freak out that it didn't go to the end of the, uh, the line right here. So uh, as soon as it gets closer to the two-minute warning, then we will come back. All right, guys. Okay, guys, about three minutes remaining. It's going to come down here to two minutes remaining and then reboot. We're going to leave our USB stick in the computer because we have to boot from a couple of more times. All right, there it goes. So we'll come up here and I'll show you what we have to do to continue our installation. All right, so once we get here, we want to choose our Mac OS installer, which is actually our hard drive, but that's what it's called at this point. So we'll hit enter. Okay, just like before, it'll hang on a couple of lines, but we'll get through it. Now we're going to get up here, and it's going to take about 12 minutes to continue the installation. So hang in there with it, guys. It's going to go completely across this time, too. Yeah, it says about 12 minutes remaining. All right, we'll come right back. Okay, it says about three minutes remaining. Okay, less than a minute remaining. That's what we want to see. And guys, when we reboot right here, we got to leave our memory stick in it again. 
All right. So now when we come up to our little boot menu again, we're going to see the name of what we called our hard drive. And we're going to select it to boot from. When it comes up here to this little menu, you just hit an arrow key and that will stop it from automatically choosing whatever it wants to. So there's my Z390 design. That's my hard drive. So I'll hit enter on that. Let's get up to the final part of the installation. Now again, guys, we'll get hung on a couple of lines on, on here, but not to worry. It'll continue. And here we go. Okay, so let's choose our country. And somewhere, there's US. Continue, uh, continue. And right here, you can see my Wi Fi is working. So I'm just going to go ahead and log into my Wi Fi. Okay. All right, then we'll click continue. I don't want to transfer any information, so we'll just continue. I definitely don't want to sign into Apple yet because I haven't changed my serial numbers. Okay, you don't want to get blacklisted, so just set up later and skip. Agree to terms and conditions. And go ahead and name it whatever you want, guys. This is your login name and your password. Okay, continue. All right, then customize settings. I always turn on location services and I turn off analytics and continue. Set up later. Yeah, Siri, I'll leave you enabled, but I'm not going to record anything right now. Continue. And here's where you can choose light or dark mode. Choose dark mode. And once we come up here, guys, we still have a couple things to do before we're finished. First of all, let's tell it what kind of keyboard we have. So we'll click Continue, and then just press the key that it's showing you here. So this is my Shift key on the left-hand side of my keyboard. So I'm going to hit my Z. That's mine. And that's the Shift key on the right-hand side. Mine is the question mark. And then right here, it says United States. So for me, I'm done. OK, now. What you're going to want to do is go over to my website and download the files that are associated with this particular build, with this video, okay? I've got them on a USB stick right now, so I'll just grab that so we can continue this. There we go. So what we have to do right now, guys, we have to transfer our EFI folder from our EFI partition on our USB stick to the hard drive so we don't have to use the USB stick anymore. So I'm going to need this mount EFI program and I'm also going to grab my Gen SM BIOS to change serial numbers. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Okay. So we're going to use mount EFI, just double click and then double click on mount EFI.command and then click OK. And right here, I need to see both of my hidden partitions. One is on the hard drive and one is on the USB stick. So I'm going to press number one, which is my USB stick, put in my password. OK. Then I'm going to press number three, which is my hard drive. I don't need to put my password in for that one. Then I can close this out, go over here to Go, Computer, and here is my EFI hidden partition. So I'll double click that. There's no EFI folder in here. So I'm going to go to my USB EFI partition, and I'm going to grab this folder and put it right into here. That's it. We're done. Now, let's change our serial numbers. 
So we'll double click here and then right click on gensmbios.command. Right click and open. All right. And here, what we want to do is select number one to install or update Max Serial. Okay, then hit enter. Then we select number two, which is select config.plist. So hit number two, enter. And it wants to know, guys, where is our config.plist? So we'll just go over here, back to computer, to our EFI hard drive partition, not our USB stick, our hard drive EFI. Double click, double click, double click on OC, and here is my config. So I just highlight it and drag it over here. Now it knows the path to my config.plist and hit enter. Now I'm going to generate my serial number. So I hit number three, enter. And what it wants to know here is the system product name. So for this build, this motherboard, this setup, we're going to use iMac 19, comma, 1. Now it doesn't matter if you have an i9-9900 or if you have an i3-8100 processor, you're still going to use iMac 19, comma, 1. Hit enter and it just injected into our config.plist all of our serial numbers including our system serial, our board serial, and our UUID. Hit enter here and we are done with that. So we'll quit and so now we can reboot the computer without any USB stick. We are done. We can start loading our software on this thing and get working. Now I just wanted to share with you a couple little things. Here's the Bluetooth by the way. I just wanted to share with you that this computer will work with dual monitors. So let's say you want to buy a graphics card and put it into this computer. Your onboard graphics will still work. The internal Intel 630 graphics chip will still work along with your graphics card. So a little bonus on that. So if you did want to use this computer for video editing, it is possible. Okay? Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun to get this thing up and running. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to build the EFI folder for this one because it was quite involved. But rest assured that if you grab this off my website, you're going to be good. And also, the USB port mapping is already done on this. So you're good. Just remember, on the USB 2.0 ports on this motherboard on the back, the one closest to the PS2 connector is turned off. Okay, so the one right above it is good, and you can plug your dongle for your wireless, uh, you know, like USB keyboard and mouse. But if you want to use a real Apple, you know, Bluetooth, Magic Keyboard, and all that, you're good. You've got Bluetooth, you've got Wi Fi. Everything works, guys. Thanks so much. And please like and subscribe. And guys, we got a lot of great videos coming this week. So stay tuned. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.